6.04 p.m. Uh, entertain a motion to call the public service subcommittee into uh, order. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. All right, so uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight, uh, we do have a very important meeting of the public service subcommittee. Um, uh, we are doing this through Zoom. It is being recorded. It's also being broadcasted live on the internet and also on our public access channel. Um, well, tonight, uh, we just have one thing to do, and that's interview candidates for the public, I'm sorry, for the administrative assistant position that Mr. Ryan Allen is holding now. Um, we have a, a plethora of different people that um, have uh, expressed that they wanted this position. We've had one person that I know of back out. She was the, uh, the 8 o'clock interview, I believe. Um, so tonight, so for the people at home, what we're going to do is we're going to interview the people on Zoom for the position that Ryan has now, the administrative assistant to the city council. And uh, they're going to give a brief background. Then they're going to um, answer any questions from the city councilors that are on here. Of course, I'll start with um, um, our two members, um, Libby and Rebecca, Councilor uh, Hernandez and Councilor uh, Lisi. And then I'll open up to any other councilor. Uh, we do have, besides Councilor uh, uh, Rebecca Lisi and, and Councilor Libby Hernandez, we also have Councilor uh, Linda Bacon. Uh, I see Councilor Terry Murphy. Um, I also see Councilor Joe McGivern. And we also have on the phone with us, uh, Councilor Howie Granny. Um, that's all I see for now. If I missed anybody, just sh yell out. And um, so I think what we're going to do is um, see if anybody has any other questions. I know I just asked that, but now we're live. Does anybody have any questions? I'm not seeing any. All right, Ryan, I'm going to ask you to put everybody except our first um, applicant uh, into the green room. <sighs> Yeah, well, I just have a question for um. It, it looks like Ashanta Esker. Um, is is that your name, Ashanta, or are you here? No, it's Tamara. I'm actually using um my sister's computer right now. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna rename you so that we have that down. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. And how do you spell that again? I apologize. It is uh, T Y M R A and then Garcia. Okay, thank you. So um. In we are doing Yvonne first, and then it will go to um, to Jeffrey Anderson Burgos, and then I believe um, uh, my Tamira is that right? Yes. Yep. Would be I believe third in the line, but I'll I'll post the um, the order of which we're going here, Jim. Thank you, sir. So I'm going to remove you guys to the waiting room, and then just stay on the line, or, or stay sort of waiting, and then as it is your turn, I'll allow you into the um, into the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. So it's, uh, we'll give Ryan a couple minutes to do that. I'm, I'm getting a text, Ryan, saying that there's no sound coming out of the, the TV. Did you hear that, Ryan? Uh, yeah, I'll have to check with Scott on that. I'll be right with you. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, Gladys. Hi, Gladys. Good evening. Gladys LeBron uh, Martinez has joined us as well. Yes. If in case I lose you, I'm heading right to the house. I'm almost there, so just let me know. Thank you. All right, Brian, it looks like everybody, well, we still have one more person, I think that has to go into the, the green room there. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, there is a there is a problem with the audio, but Scott just said that he's working on it. I'm hoping that it'll be fixed like momentarily. Yeah, me too. Uh, 
Tell them to check. You the guys got, if you got cell phones, you can listen to it on the cell phone. Jim, I am being told by Scott that the, the live stream does have audio. So as he's working on this, I mean, you can feel free to proceed with the interview if you'd like. Does he, does he know why it's not working? He's, he, he did not explain to me what's going on. All right. All right. We're going to have to revisit this. I think I'm going to have to file an order to bring the web media in because, you know, we that's a discussion for another day, but... Uh, this should happen. Um, all right. So, having said all that, um, I think that we um, um, we should uh, not make Yvonne wait any longer. I think she's uh, she waited over an hour last week, and she's waited you know a full week. So, uh, having said that, once again, I'm, um, I'm the, the chair of the subcommittee, and also uh, Libby Hernandez, Councilor Hernandez, and Councilor Alisi serve on this, but we also have some other fine counselors that are with us as well. And I'm sure there's probably uh, uh, several watching it at home. So having said that, we kind of uh, told you what was happening uh, last week, but um, just to let you know that you can give us an opening statement, that sort of thing, and then we can ask you some questions. Um, so having said that, shoot over to you. You have the floor. Me? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. You, you wanted me to speak about, about my resume? Yeah, we'll just give a background. Um, we just want to get to know you. Okay. A very brief background um, so we can have a feel of uh, you and your personality and that sort of thing. And then um, you can certainly discuss anything you want on your resume and that sort of thing. We'll ask some questions. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Well, I, I'm an attorney and a notary with license to practice law in Puerto Rico. I have 20 years, 25 years of experience in litigation, but not only litigation, uh, offering seminars, having, uh, re making research, legal research, interviews. I have computer knowledge and working with the draft of documents. I worked for approximately four years for uh, legal services of Puerto Rico Inc. And there we gave legal representation to low income population. Later, I worked for the Civil Action and Education Corporation. And there we gave uh, free legal representation to inmates. I have worked on some law firms in uh, bankruptcy cases and foreclosure cases. As I told you in my cover letter, I see my job as a way to help people and to try to get some social justice. That's my view. Okay, I, I asked this last week and I'll ask you again. Um, I assume that your goal is to become licensed in this state of Massachusetts. Um, as an attorney, correct? This is a this is a, a goal, okay. my, a long term goal, no, in, not in the immediate future. Okay. Um, so one of the things that I, you know, as a person who interviews a lot of people with different aspects, um, I always think about the next job. You know, is this person is this person going to stay here? Is this person going to retain here? And you know, we spend a lot of time and effort training a person. Is this person you know, uh, going to just uh, you know, move on uh, because we don't want to have this conversation down the road, you know, within a year or so. So what, if you get this position, is this something you're going to stay with? Yeah. Uh, I describe me as a stable person. I have, I worked for the Civil Action and Education Corporation for 12 years. So uh, I can commit to be in a job for a long term. Yeah, I'm looking at your resume. Your resume is very good. Um, it is very good. Um, you have a lot of prominent litigation experience as well, and you also do a lot with uh, different organizations, which is uh, which is a, which is a nice thing. Uh, and as you said, um, yeah, you stay with you know one of the things 
interesting enough, one of the things I was looking at at resumes is you know how long a person had stayed in, um, in in a position. But now I'm being told by people that uh, millennials they they bounce around, and so I'm not able, I shouldn't be looking at that as criteria any longer. But uh, what have you? Um, does any counselors have any questions? Just either raise your hand or make sure you're on. Okay, Counselor Lisi, just unmute yourself. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for being with us this evening, Yvonne, and for your interest in the position. Um, I think you understand from the job description that it's a position that requires um, both um, organizational skills and research skills. Um, I know that you spoke briefly to um, you know the legal research that you have um, experience with, um, but could you just give some some uh, I guess some concrete examples of things that perhaps were, were not organized papers filing or or some sort of like big pro project that you had to um, like archive or organize in some way? Can you give an example of how you took you know a lot of sort of disparate information and organized it into some sort of cohesive system? Well, I my in my job I have to pre to prepare memorandums, drafts, motion, and uh, I have to deal with uh, laws, regulations, ordinances, analyze them, analyze jurisprudence, and then make oh, a memorandum or a motion to the to the court. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the kind of of. Uh, uh, research that I do. I draft my own motions, I type my own motions, and I make the legal research. Okay, and then to the other um, point that I wanted to um, get another concrete example about is uh, like taking a large body of information and then creating some sort of system of organization for how to find that work that that information at a later time. Because a lot of um, a lot of the work that we're doing in city council is, um, you know, we have 13 different city councilors. They're all filing different orders, and there are different timelines for each of these orders. Um, also, there's different communities that are doing similar um, sort of uh, work on different issues, and so we don't necessarily have to start from the ground up to um, make progress on the ordinances and laws that we want to create, we could borrow from other communities to see what they're doing and how it might apply to us. Um, but at the at, at the end of the day, what is most important is the um, ability to take a lot of different pieces of information and create a system for retrieving and pulling that information out at a later date. So that that's what I would love to hear if you have an example of um, ways that you've been able to organize information so that it could be retrieved easily at some other uh, point in time? Well, in my job, it's key uh, that I have to pr prioritize. Give uh, special attention to urgent, uh, urgent things. What is urgent needs to be done uh, firstly. So I have to organize my time to prioritize uh, make first the things that are urgent and uh, later attend the other aspects of the other chores. Sure. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. Councillor Hernandez, make sure you're on mute. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Nice to meet you, Ms. Ms. Olmo. Thank um, you, thank you. Yes, my question um, comes from um, do you have what, what what do you consider yourself uh, for Microsoft um, Office Suites? Do you consider yourself to be a beginner, intermediate, or advanced user? I think that I'm an intermediate. Okay, and can you give me an example of the way that um, you've organized like documents and any of those systems to later have access to them? Um, in a like not immediate result, but at least in a in a timely manner. How how do you use those systems to organize information and then retrieve it after? Well, in my computer, I saw I have some timesheets and some archives, and I file them in this in these archives. Okay, 
And what um, systems is it that you're inter an intermediate user with? And you mentioned some of the Microsoft um, Office Suite systems that you utilize. Yes, yes Office, Microsoft. Uh, I made a lot of investigation on Google. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Council Lee? Yes, go ahead. You're having all kinds of problems with the video feed. It's in and out, black and out, blacks out, comes back in. It shows a television on the screen. It's, it's a mess. Do you have a question? No, I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. Councilor Murphy? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Yvonne, first of all, thank you for your interest thank and you. uh and welcome to Holyoke. Thank you. And let me just ask, and I'm gonna go making the assumption you got the job and you're working for the next few years. What I'd like to know is what would you like to be able to say that you've accomplished what once you were leaving this position? What would be your specific goals in terms of what you would want to have been able to accomplish? I wish I was able to say that I contribute to the better living for the Holyoke people, that I could help and give a better way of living. Okay, thank you. Hello? <clears throat> uh, yes, is that? Um, Glad to see you. Yep, yes. Go ahead, class. Hi, and um, welcome again to Holyoke, and thank you for taking the time to be interviewed by us. Thank you. Um, so if I was to call your 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 past employers, what would they say about you? <laughs> it is hard to speak about that myself, but I think that they would say that I am a responsible person, uh, able to do my work, uh, uh, able to oh, with a high interest in learn and to hear people and a hard worker too okay good next can i um what would we, what would you consider be your 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 strength what are your strength well i'm a hard worker so i'm dedicated when i have a goal when i have a chore i dedicate myself to do it right i'm responsible so I think that that's are my qualities. Um, what would what would be your weakness? Weakness. Sometimes I'm I could be a little bit of stubborn. Give me. Can you give me an example about that? Sometimes uh, I want to do things within my way of thinking until I discover that it's not the 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 perfect way. Okay. If I think something is gonna be good, I will try and try to make it that way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I picked up one question that I'm going to ask each applicant and um, Chairman Leahy alluded to it when he talked about working for 13 people with all different personalities, points of view and perspectives on things. And so I'm interested to understand how you would see yourself dealing with that scenario. Well, first of all, I, I... I think that I need to be uh, neutral, you know? do my job without any preference with one or other of the councils. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor McGivern, see your hand is up. Thank you, Councilor Leahy, and welcome, uh, Attorney Omo Rios, if I got that right. Yes. Yeah, you, you do have a very impressive resume and you're doing a nice job answering questions. Thank uh, you. I'd just like to take a, another step on the questions. Um, one of the, you know, we, a lot of focus has been on working with 13 city councilors. 
Um, it goes beyond that too. You, your people skills or the person who takes this job's people skills are very important because you'll be working with department heads, other departments within the city. You'll be working with the general public at large. Can you give us an example of how you deal with people on a large scale basis and how you, if you feel comfortable about that? Yeah, yeah, I'm comfortable with that. I, I have had only one or two bosses at the same time, but I have had like a hundred clients at a time. And sometimes clients could be described as some kind of bosses. And you need to distribute your time to give each of them the appropriate uh, treatment. So I'm comfortable working with a lot of people. Okay. And did you have some disgruntled clients occasionally? I have had, yeah. Okay, so you know how to handle it? I have worked with inmates. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I uh, I do too. I think I understand what you where you're coming from. Um, but how about um, the the, um, the hours of work? What are you are you up to date on what the hours are required? Yeah, I'm I'm available. I have time the time that is required for the position. Okay, but we you know because we're a city councilor. City Council, open meeting laws, we work at night. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of a part daytime job, part nighttime job. Is that good with you? Yes, I know that you have a very busy schedule and I'm okay with that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, I don't see any other hands. Does anybody else have any uh, follow-up questions or any, any questions? Okay, I've not seen any. I'll ask a couple questions. These are questions I've, um, I've used in, in different interviews normally my day job but um, tell me tell us about a situation that didn't go the way you wanted to go um, and what did you learn what were some takeaways or some outcomes well sometimes you did it a hundred percent in a case and you and the verdict was not what you were waiting for but I always say if I gave my hundred percent if I uh, made a good job this is an experience this is a learning. I don't have to be ashamed of that. Okay, what type of people, what personality traits do you find most difficult to work with? With people that are not well organized or people that don't have some sense type of sensibility for all the problems. Do you have any questions for us? Yeah, how many, uh, at, at this moment, how many standing committees do the council have? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? How many standing committees oh. do the council have? Okay, so we have the uh, finance committee, we have the ordinance committee, we have public service, public safety, we also have uh, uh, depart, uh, d d d g and r that's five. And then we also have um, a joint, we have a couple of joint committees. Um, so I, I would say to answer your question, it's five, but there could be other. Um, also, I think that Ryan uh, helps out with the CPA, or he did. Okay, that's interesting. And do you have uh, weekly meetings by video conference? Yeah, so good question. Um, so what we've been doing now because of this whole COVID-19 world, is uh, the city council meets full session the first and the third uh, Tuesday of each month. Now, different subcommittees, uh, such as Councilor Lisi and uh, 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 Finance, uh, different subcommittees meet more than others. Uh, for instance, Public Service uh, generally doesn't meet all that a, a lot. Ordinance meets every week, generally. Um, and uh, some committees meet more than others. And uh, uh, if you get this position, you're gonna know everything about the city. Here and learn quickly. <laughs> okay, thank you. No, I don't have no further questions. Okay, if you Honestly. do have further questions, though, all of our numbers, names are on the internet. Feel free to reach out to any one of us. Okay. All right. Well, we thank you and uh, Ryan. Um, and good luck. Good luck. Wait, did, me, did you have any questions prior? I'm sorry. I think I. No, no. I was just, I was just oh, saying goodbye. Uh, oh. goodbye and thank you for uh, considering us. You know, for your employment opportunities. All well, right. Thank you. Thank you for your attention, for your time. No problem, Ryan. I think the next person that we have in 
Greg, can you hear me? Mr. Jeffrey? Yes, I can hear you. I'll put Jeffrey in. Thank you. Excuse me, do you want me to leave the meeting? Yes. If you... Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jeffrey, are you with us? I am. Um, okay. Um, uh, first of all, welcome and thank you for applying for this important position. Um, you certainly, um, you know, we all know you. Um, uh, I just wanted to let you know, I mean, you're pretty familiar with the, the city council system, but we'll, what we're going to do here tonight under the public service uh, subcommittee is we're going to have you give us a brief uh, statement, a brief background of, of uh, what led you here and what background uh, you think would be um, you know, fitting for this position. Uh, then any city councilor, I'll start with our, of course, the subcommittee first, then they can ask you questions, and we'll open up to the full council. Um, so having said that, uh, you have the floor. Take it away, sir. Sure, sure. Thank you. Um, uh, first, uh, just thank you all for giving me the opportunity to uh, speak to all of you this evening about this. Uh, honestly, when I saw this position open, I was really thrilled at the opportunity uh, my uh, background, I, uh, so I'm a proud graduate of Holyoke Community College and UMass Amherst, uh, where I got my bachelor's in political science a few years ago. And this is really the kind of role I was looking for from day one after I became a graduate. So I was very excited. Uh, I did not grow up in Holyoke. I've lived here for eight years. And one of the first things I noticed about this community is how much of the community really takes an active interest in being a part of serving the community. And it, it was, it's infectious. And really it's in that spirit of public service that I sought, sought this role to begin with. Uh, I would say, as far as my background is concerned, I have a great deal of, of uh, uh, pu not public service, but customer service experience, which has really developed a, a strong sense of professionalism in myself. Uh, I also have a strong sense of integrity. I demand a, a high level of integrity from myself. Uh, I would say probably the part of my background that most closely resembles what this role entails is uh, having served as the student senate president when I was at HCC. Uh, I was involved, obviously. I was there in too. I had that position. Oh, did you really? Did well, you really? A little bit before you, but <laughs> maybe a year or two. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, it was uh, really a, a rewarding position. It put me in place of obviously creating agendas for weekly meetings. I was in close contact with several members of the administration on a regular basis. Uh, I was... Uh, I had to hold on to a lot of confidential information at times, you know, student data, that kind of thing, in just in the course of having the position. Uh, sometimes the school sought me out when they needed a student to speak to members of the press. And uh, one thing I'm, I'm very proud of in that role is uh, the, the summer prior to my year as student senate president, I led a team of senators where we completely re rewrote the student senate constitution. Uh, it was uh, one what of the- What was wrong with it? You didn't write the previous one, did you? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Actually, I have to correct myself. I, I was the secretary of the students. I, I, I didn't make it to the president. Well, that's an important role too. That's an important role too, as I learned myself. Uh, but you know, we, we looked at it and just found that it, there was room for updating it. The, the, the previous constitution was wonderfully put together. <laughs> it, you know, times change. And so we just, there were things that had just become obsolete over time, a, little, a few redundancies. And just, so we, we took on the effort to rewrite that. And uh, it, it, it's one of those areas where I kind of learned about myself and developed a sense of being willing to recognize when thing organization can be updated or adjusted and really just taken on. So it, as I said, you know, I, I, I sought out this job because I really believe in the sense of public service, you know, here in the city of Holyoke. Very good. And, and if, if you're staring at me, and the reason I'm looking down is I have another um, reading your resume and going over my notes for you. So I don't want you to think I'm not paying attention to however I am uh, going through your, uh, your resume. And it's quite good. Um, at this time, I want to see any hands, any counselors? 
Rebecca. Okay, I saw Rebecca's first. So go ahead. Um, thanks. I'll, I'll you know in in transparency, I'll be asking the same questions to all the candidates, and I think that is um, part of the fairness that we create in the process. Um, but for me, I think it's um, crucial for the person who takes on this role to have um, two. Um, key talents. Um, one is organizational skills and the other is research skills. Um, so uh, I'd love for you to like flesh out an example of each, uh, example of how you've been able to uh, demonstrate organizational skills and also you know how you how an example of how you've been able to demonstrate your your own research skills. Sure, sure, I appreciate that. So looking at organization first, it's important to unpack that because there are different ways of being organized. And there's or being organized for yourself or being organized for the benefit of others. So when I say being organized for yourself, you know, I, I think of my current position. I work for a residential solar company where if I need to follow up with potential clients or, you know, hold on to updates of projects that um, I'm a part of at the beginning of, I'm organizing for myself. So that's putting in reminders in my phone if they if somebody wants me to call them back on a specific day or a specific time. I've created a spreadsheet for myself. Uh, my role is a lead generator with that company. So I, I've created a spreadsheet for myself so that I can keep myself updated as far as the status of projects where they're at, do I need to follow up with them? Do I need to follow up with the consultant that is on that, is working with that client? So uh, that's organizing for myself. So organizing for somebody else, clearly that means it's it has to not just be logical for me, but logical for whoever also needs to be a part of that. So, you know, for if I'm looking at the office of the administrative assistant all of you are filing orders you need to be updated on that i would see the role as maintaining you know some kind of a spreadsheet so that we could look at where it is when it was filed who it was filed by what committee it's in who needs to be contacted about it and making sure all of that's all clear to you as far as how it's organized and being able to maintain that I think is really important. Uh, I, I think one of the one of the benef benefits of if you look at the state website, I, I think this system would probably be overly expensive for the city of Holyoke, but there are pieces of legislation and you can go onto the state website and look for piece of legislation when would it, when was it filed, what committee is it is it in? And I think that that would be, something in some capacity, I think it would benefit not just you as counselors, but the public at large. Um, there's organized as far as communication. So somebody needs to get communication. I think the best way to do it is to make sure the moment you know you need to communicate something, do it right away. Uh, so I, I kind of have a organizational philosophy in that respect. I hope that helps answer your question in some respects. Uh, as far as research, a lot of my research comes from my academic experience. So when I was a student at HCC, uh, I took part in the uh, undergraduate research conference. Uh, that came as part of a, uh, a project that I had done during an honors colloquium at, at HCC. Uh, moving into my experience at UMass Amherst, I had my, my senior thesis which was an entire year's project uh, doing the research. I had to put together data, analyze that, do a lot of research on the history of the subject that I was looking at, Things analyze that, soon. present that, and put it all together. And I, I'm proud to say I did get an A minus in that project for the Honors College there at UMass Amherst. Um, looking into my professional experience, my, as I mentioned, I work for a residential solar company and we work in territories. There are some territories we don't work in, but I've, I've looked into some research into how we can move into service, servicing people we don't currently 
work with and finding out some information and then presenting that to my supervisors so that potentially we can offer our services to more people. Excellent. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Councilor Hernandez. Hi, Mr. Burgos, and thank you for um, joining us um, in this interview. Um, welcome. Um, my question is, um, you mentioned on your answer to Councilor Lisi that um, you organized and, and you kept on mentioning charts, data sheets. Um, so I'm also going to be consistent with the questions that I ask all of the candidates. And my question is, um, what is the experience, what do you consider your experience to be as it relates to Microsoft um, Office? Um, beginner, advanced, or beginner, intermediate, or advanced? And then the second part of the question is, and how do you organize <clears throat> large amounts of information? What type of system do you use? And um, yeah, can you please give us an example? Sure, sure, I appreciate the question. Uh, so as far as Microsoft is concerned, uh, Word is, you know, I've been using that since before I was even a college student, you know, writing letters, you know, my, I'm familiar with that. Um, sheets, or Sheets is the Google platform, but uh, spreadsheets, I'm familiar with. Uh, I have a little bit of familiarity with creating formulas, but uh, that, that's an area I think with more practice I'd become more, more familiar with. Uh, I, I use, you know, as I mentioned, I use it for my current job for maintaining some organization for the uh, clients that we work with for my benefit as well as for the benefit of my supervisor um, putting it together just you know there are, I, I'm sure that there are a lot more features to it that I could become more familiar with and I'm the kind of person that gets really good really fast the more that I do work with uh, a software uh, as far as PowerPoint, I haven't used it a great deal because honestly, I, I tend to prefer using uh, Prezi, which is just a more dynamic uh, presentation software. Uh, but I'm, you know, it, it's another, it's another software where just a quick overview, and I, I take it on very quickly. Um, as as far as organizing large amounts of data, it's. Really, uh, again, it's who is the data for. So, uh, I, I think going in, going in right away and categorizing it is, I think, the very first part because data means nothing if they, if it doesn't have context. And so, being able to first put it into different categories and then creating different uh, spreadsheets from there I think is really important. And that, that's all electronic data. Uh, obviously there's organization in terms of material uh, information as well, paperwork and that kind of thing. So I, you know, I'd wanna go into the office and understand how it's organized right now, wrap my head around the thinking behind the current organization. And I'm, you know, I'm not afraid to offer suggestions if I think there are you know, better ways things can be done. Thank you so much. Answers. Uh, any other counselors have any other questions? I say Gladys. Go ahead, Councilor Moore. <clears throat> Hi, Mr. Burgos. Thank you for taking the time to come to this interview. I would also stick to the same questions I've asked the first um, uh, applicant. Um, what do you consider to be your strength? Um, my ability to work with people. Um, I Every single job that I've ever had, it's always been very important to me that I develop a strong working relationship with anybody that I've worked with, whether it's my colleagues in the same position, my colleagues in other roles that work closely with me, my supervisors. It, it, I that's always been the best way for me, me to be able to do, do my job effectively. Uh, I also work very hard at trying to understand the jobs of people that I work with. So in terms of the job that I have now, I, I mentioned that I'm a lead generator. The leads that I generate move on to different people in different roles. Uh, my attitude is if I can understand the role of the person in the next you know, part of the process, 
it helps me do my job more effectively because I can anticipate what their needs are going to be and be able to hand off you know that potential client in much in a much more effective way and it just creates a better experience for everybody all around what would be, what what would you consider to be one of your weakness <sighs> I can be passionate sometimes, uh, but I think that over time I've learned to um, subdue that. You know, I, I, in my in my younger years, I I might have been you know a little bit more outspoken with people face to face. Um, I, I've you know I, I think that in my role, particularly when, when I mentioned at HCC, working with a diverse group of people from different backgrounds, you know, being involved here in Holyoke with a lot of people who, who have a lot of different opinions and perspectives has really developed uh, my ability to, you know, look at things from different perspectives and respect different perspectives. And I think that's helped me to uh, limit that passion in some way you know, with, while still meaning, maintaining my principles. And if we were to call any of your peers, what would they say about Mr. Bogos? What would they say about you? I, I think they would say that you know, I'm, I'm friendly. Uh, as I mentioned, I do, you know, demand of myself a high level of, of integrity. And, you know, I, I work well with others. You know, it's... Um, I, I think a lot of people understand all of those features about me. Okay, thank you. We'll mute it. We'll mute it. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, so I, I, I think we should address um, something now. Something I asked you, um, but you do have a husband that is a city sitting city councilor. Um, can you walk us through, you said you called the ethics board? Yes, yes. So I, I knew applying for this job that the first concern might be for some of you. And, you know, for our, for our own sake, making sure that there was nothing concerned about the ethics of if I were to get this position, me holding this position and married to one of your colleagues. And uh, I wanted to clear that clear that up right away before I even submitted my resume. And the the guidance we got was that you know, he can't be involved obviously in the hiring of this. Uh, he and I don't even talk about it because we just want to be as cautious as we can be about the ethics. He he. he, he Hope you know. I, I assume he hasn't tried to influence any of you uh, because I know the kind of person he is. Uh, he wouldn't be able to take part in votes regarding the salary of this position, and uh, all of those all of those things are very logical to the both of us. So um, I, I understand. You know, we have the the city clerk is married to the president of the city council. So if there was any questions or concerns. Uh, I'm sure that they have some perspective that we could get guidance on as well as obviously from the city solicitor. So uh, we, we go out, we're going out of our way to make sure that we don't even come close to crossing any ethical lines. I know you are. I, I just wanted to bring that up so the people at home. Sure, it's, it's absolutely a fair question. Um, so I also, um, what, what different personality types do you um, have more difficulty working with? Uh, I, I would say that the personality type that I might struggle with the most is, you know, somebody who might not, might judge me right away or judge my motivations without first communicating with me or getting to know me. Um, it, it, I, I think any, any one of us might take that personally if, if somebody you know, assumed where my motivations were or the thinking behind a decision I make or an opinion I have without seeking out, you know, even a conversation with me. Um, I do try to 
bridge that with somebody else and you know at least reach out if that if I'm in that kind of situation uh, but it, initially I I might struggle with that okay um, I, I think I saw counselor give her hand up first thank you counselor and uh, Jeffrey welcome and, and thank you for applying did I understand you you told uh, counselor Leahy you were the president of the HCC student council yes sir and Councilor Leahy, you said you were the secretary? I was, I was the secretary of the student senate. Okay, just so you both know, I was the vice president in 1974 <laughs> and 75. And if you look in the bylaws, Jeffrey, the vice president is in charge of organizing the office, organizing all the keeping of the records and the votes and everything that happens in the, uh, the, in the activity of the student council itself. And that's how I got the job of vice president because no one else wanted to do that. Let me, let me get um, on focus here. Uh, we're all trying to ask the same questions and, and to be quite honest, you've already partially answered my question. My area is, is people skills and you gave a very good, uh, I think it was to Gladys's question about your strengths, answer to how you deal with people, with your colleagues, with the people that you work with. And I, I think I read into department heads and so forth. Um, take people skills to another degree. Um, what about the, the public at large and people who are calling in that might be a little disgruntled or a little bit upset or looking for things that may, may not be their purview? Can you tell us how you would handle that? I, th I think the first step in that is trying to trying to understand it from their perspective. It, you know, they're calling for a number of different reasons. If they're asking a question, it's because they don't know the answer or they're seeking guidance or, or help. And it, taking, on a, it, taking on that role means being in a position of being able to help somebody. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning that I applied for this job in the spirit of public service. And so to me, getting those kinds of calls is an opportunity to serve the public. So if they're angry or mad or frustrated, that's not, they're not angry or mad or frustrated at me. They're angry or mad or frustrated because whatever has led them to that point hasn't solved their issue, hasn't created a satisfactory situation for them. So I, I'm a natural problem solver. I like to be of help to people. So getting as much information from them as far as what's led them to, to make that call is going to be the best way to help get them to a better place. Okay, nice answer. Uh, Jeffrey, you know the hours that we work and you know the hours that this job requires kind of reflects the committee meeting schedules that we work. Do you have any issues with that? I do not. Okay. And uh, I, I usually don't ask personal questions and, and I'm not going to ask a personal question that serious, but if uh, if you and your husband are at a meeting or tied into a meeting on, a, on an evening, who will be watching the parrot? <laughs> I, I, I think you don't have to will be that. just fine. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you for applying. Thank you. Councilor Murphy. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Jeffrey, thank you for your applying. And uh, I just got one question. So, and I'm same theory that I'm trying to ask the same question. So should you get this job and let's say you work it for two or three or four years, when you're leaving the job, what would you like to say that you were able to accomplish uh, as, as something that you were really proud of what you did? The, the way I see this job is uh, all of you as city councilors, this, you all have full-time jobs outside of this, you know, and so I see this role as really enabling all of you to be more effective and productive at your jobs. And uh, all of you initially ran for city council and got involved in this for different reasons, uh, different perspectives, but you all are here because you want to serve your community. And any, if I, three years down the road or 20 years down the road, I'm you know, finally ready to move on. I, I would want to be able to say that I was able to help our city's legislative body be as effective and productive and efficient at their jobs as they possibly can be. And that would be reflected in how the city at large feels about the city council. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councilor Vacant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Um, and thanks, Jeffrey. I didn't want you to think I wasn't asking my standard question that I've written for each candidate, but you quite thoroughly answered it when you were asked the question about strengths, because I was jumping on to Councillor Leahy's earlier comment about 13 different counselors, very different personalities, different perspectives, philosophies, et cetera. And you spoke very eloquently about you know, working with people from different perspectives. Um, occasionally, some very passionate discussions do take place and people can be very strong in those opinions, but you even kind of spoke to that. But how do you think you'd be able to manage it if there was a really hot issue and the people on the council were very hot and passionate about it when you were having to work with us on a day-to-day -day basis, perhaps? Well, I, I think the people elect you sometimes too be passionate about the issues they care about. You're not here just expressing your own opinions. You're here representing the perspectives mm -hmm. of, of other people. Uh, I don't see a place in this job it, you know, as administrative assistant for my own perspectives. That's, that's not, if I were to get the job, that's not why I'd be here. Uh, as I said, I see the role as really enabling all of you to be as effective as you can be at your job. And that I don't think I could be effect as effective at doing that if I allowed myself to be concerned about what passions you're bringing to it. Uh, that that's, as I said, I I'd want to be able to develop a really good, you know, working relationship with all of you. And I think that that would be harmed if any of you ever felt that I was allowing my own personal views to influence the way that I do my job. That's just, you know, as I said, I, ha I demand of myself a high level of integrity and that's the way I'll do the job. Thank you. Excellent, okay, uh, not seeing any other hands. Uh, do you have any questions for us? Councilor Leahy, I'd like to speak. Oh, yeah. Councilor Granny, who's on the phone, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Burgos. It's a pleasure to meet you. Good evening. Uh, and I'm reading your academic record. It's very impressive uh, and uh, uh, certainly uh, exemplary as far as your your uh, your academic standing at, at, at the University of Massachusetts and at the Ohio Community College. Uh, at any rate, though, I'm interested a little bit in volunteer experience and community involvement. And on your resume, you have listed Dana-Farber Cancer Institute fundraiser 2015 to 2020. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Sure, sure. So uh, at the time uh, when I first started doing that, I was working for uh, 99 Restaurant uh, up until the, you know, the point that I had graduated from college. And uh, they've had a team running for probably going on 20 years now that has run the Falmouth Road Race for uh, to raise money for the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. So I got involved in that as a result of working for the restaurant. And uh, that developed into not just a love of fundraising for that organization, but really a love of running. And over the course of the last several years, I've run various road races to raise money for them from the Falmouth Road Race, uh, some 5Ks, all the way up until tw 2018, running the Boston Marathon for Dana-Farber. And so that, that experience, uh, I learned a great deal about Dana-Farber. As I said, I, I developed a, um, a greater love of running. I don't think I ever would have run a marathon if, if it weren't for me getting involved with Dana-Farber. And it, it also forced me to learn some very creative ways of raising money you know, from, you know, baking batches of squares. You, know, you might have heard of those through one. Uh, from, you know, creating events. I, you know, I've, I organized a fundraising event at Gateway City Arts a, a couple of years ago and doing tag sales, all kinds of various things just to be able to raise the money for that. And uh, one, one quick follow-up question. With the Falmouth Road Race, did you ever meet a gentleman named Tommy Leonard? Good man. The name sounds vaguely familiar, but I can't honestly say that I have. 
Okay, thank you. He's just right, uh, thank you for, for a question. point of reference. He's a gentleman that's uh, started the Falmouth Road Race, and he um, was one of the founding fathers of the Olympic okay. Magic Road Race as well. That's why Dr. the name is familiar. And he was a longtime bartender in uh, in Boston. And there's a bridge downtown Boston named after him. And uh, he spent a lot of time in Hoyle. Good man. Um, do you have any questions for us? Um, so just a, a couple of uh, clarifying questions, really. So the I've, I've seen a, a little bit of conflicting information as far as the hours. I, I, I did say that whatever the hours are, I have no issue. Um, I've seen in, in one area where it's every day, like 12 to 9 potentially, if meetings run longer, obviously beyond that. And then I've gotten some information that some days – it's earlier and some days it's later depending on if they're a meeting so yeah so those uh, are just, good questions we have ryan on the, on the line here and um ryan could probably give you a better background of that because he works closely with the council president todd mckee um brian yeah so what you want me to talk about the hours as far yes. as yep so typically what will happen unless i you know unless i speak and communicate with todd or whoever the you know president may be um if we do have a meeting, usually it's at six o'clock, six thirty. Full city council meetings are at seven, but on days that we have meetings, you would come in at noon, come in at twelve, um, work up until you know like an hour before dinner time. Uh, you know, take the dinner and then go into the meeting at you know the six o'clock or six thirty p.m. and then um, work till the end of that meeting. Um, so it, it does vary, and then normal days you would work a regular eight thirty to four thirty at city hall. Okay, that helps. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Ryan. And again, I have no issue with those hours. It was just more of a clarification. Um, and the other question I have, I, I guess, just kind of confirming what I believe the process is going to be. So I understand your next full city council meeting is next Wednesday, the 4th. And so that's when you're likely to vote on the hiring? Um, as it stands out, correct. Yes. Okay. So I, I will say that. Um, as far as when I could start, if I were fortunate enough to, you know, get the position, uh, I would like to, you know, give my current employer the respect of, of two weeks notice. Um, if getting the position were dependent upon being able to start earlier because you really needed to fill it, um, I have such a good relationship with my current supervisor that I'm sure she would be very understanding. Um, in fact, she sent me a message earlier today just wishing me good luck on this interview. Um, she's she doesn't want to lose me, but she's really cheering me on because she knows this is really the field that I want to be in. Yeah, and you can certainly please tell her that the um, uh, the roof to City Hall isn't probably uh, capable of having solar. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so once again, thank you so much. We greatly appreciate it. Um, and at this time, Ryan, if you could move him back to the green room, and uh, or you, I mean, you could actually uh, you can go. You don't have to stay here with us. Um, uh, but we do appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you much. All. Have a good night. You too. Hey, Ryan. Um, I think that we have, um, I might be saying this wrong, but Nora. Yeah, I think um, so. Her name is comes in NSOT. I'm going to admit her into the room and we'll find out what her, what her name is. Okay. So I, I will say that um, as far as when I could if I were fortunate enough to, you know, uh, Howie, I think your um, TV. I think it's feeding back. Well, yeah. it's not my TV. My TV is on you. Somebody's. So Jim, she was, it, I just admitted her to the meeting and it was 
we have like the three dots, you know, was um, saying she was being admitted and then she just kind of dropped off. So I'll maybe give her a moment to, uh, to just get back into the meeting. Okay. Um, should we uh, just go to the next person then? Uh, that's up to you, but she might be panicking if she feels like she just got. Fair enough. Good point. Good point. Jim, if you have her resume in front of you, could you just give me her cell phone? Maybe I could give her a, a phone call. Maybe text it to me, and I can um. Yeah, I'll do it right now. I'll text it to you. Appreciate it. I'll do it my message. Get it? Did you text that to me, Jim, or did you send it? Send you in the chat. Okay. Not in this chat, right? Because this chat is disabled. Uh, we no. we have a different chat going in a private oh, okay. chat under Zoom. And do we know why this chat is disabled while we're waiting for the applicant? That we can't we raise our hands or nothing? You want it able? No, I'm saying because I, where's our options to raise our hands and stuff? Why do we have you to do it like on the top right hand screen? And there's like three dots. So then if you hit those three dots, then you can uh, scroll down. And I don't think it's there. <laughs> so no, uh, you have to go to participants. You have to go to participants and click on that. And then yeah, the bottom. And on the I know, bottom. but it it doesn't. Oh yes, now I found it. Okay. Yeah, because it's working. Because uh, Terry and it's Joe. Working. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I just spoke with Nuria. She just um she just got booted out. She's um uh she's coming back into the meeting now. So I'll let her in once she gets uh when she's in. Perfect. Sounds good. She's in now, Jim, it seems like. Hi, everybody. All right. How do we pronounce your name? I just want to make sure it's... Um... Sure. So it's like Nuria. with an N, Nuria. I'm sorry? No, I heard two responses. It's like Maria, but with an N, it's Nuria. 
Okay. All right. Can you, uh, you got, I think you got two candidates at the same Thank time. We, yes. Uh, yeah. Brian, can you move um, to, uh, Ms. Garcia to the uh, green room? Brian? Okay. So, yeah. hey, good evening. How are you? I know you were with us last week, and I, I want to apologize once again. Um, so tonight is going to be very similar. For, well, hopefully not similar. It's going to be a lot different. <laughs> but, um, tonight, um, you're going to give us a brief introduction, um, and then what we're going to do is uh, the counselors are going to ask you some questions. Uh, if you can respond to those, then um, you can ask us any questions if you have it. And then after that, um, our next uh, scheduled city council meeting is next Wednesday. And uh, at that time, any counselor can vote for whoever they choose. So having said all that, welcome. Thank you for mm -hmm. your uh, participation tonight. And mm -hmm. also thank you for applying uh, for this wonderful position. Why don't you tell us your name and where you live and your background and that sort of thing. And Go ahead. The floor is yours. Go ahead. Oh, I can hear you. I can hear you now. The sound all cut out. Oh. Good. <laughs> okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, have you give us a brief introduction, then the counselors are going to ask you some questions, and then um, uh, then next week, uh, our full city council meeting, each counselor will have a vote, and that's when the person's going to get selected. But having said that, give us your background, I'm sorry, but where you live and First off, I'd like to thank you all for having me here. It's an honor and, uh, and just thank you for the opportunity. Uh, with regards to my background, um, I am not a native of Holyoke, but I am local. I'm from Wilbraham, Mass. And um, in the recent uh, past three years, actually, I've lived in Holyoke. Um, I've really come to love the city. And that's what kind of prompted me to apply for this position when I saw that it was open. Uh, with that having being said, um, I, with regards to professional background, have worked uh, most recently in operations. I have a degree in uh, business from Bay Path University in Longmeadow, and I am currently en route to get my master's. I have my bachelor's, and I'm in the master's program at this time. Um, I really enjoy operations and logistics, anything to do with managerial business. Um, and I worked most recently for a uh, telecommunications company that worked largely within the healthcare sector. So we worked with um, large scale installations and their infrastructure, such as like Genesis Healthcare, uh, big healthcare companies like that. We did all of their telecom. Excellent. All right, does anybody have any questions? Okay, Councilor Lisi. Thank you. Um, I I'm not sure if we need to mute somebody, by the way, because when, um, right, like I, I'm not getting Nuria's face in the speaker view. I don't know if somebody's uh, somebody else is overriding her um, when she's speaking. I'm just going to put it out there for folks to just check that they're on mute. Yeah, I did. Thanks. Um, okay, so Nuria, thanks so much for being with us this evening. Um, I'm asking the same question to all the candidates. Uh, I think that the two sort of like key features of this position are uh, number one organizational skills and then number two research skills and so um, I would love if you could provide like some concrete examples of um, you know experiences where you've had to uh, you know develop systems for organizations so that uh, information could be easily accessed um, and then on the other hand uh, you know re research skills so like how how familiar are you with doing research um, what are you using um, you know, is it is it limited to Google, Google or are you using other sort of like databases? Sure. Um, so to answer your first uh, part about organization, um, I worked, as I said, as an operations manager. So a large part of that job is organization. Uh, we had roughly 150 contractors um, across the nation, and my job was to oversee all of the jobs that were happening across the nation. So organization naturally became the number one concern. Uh, when we had jobs scheduled at, say, a nursing facility, and we had a job contractor that was to be there at a certain time to do a certain job for a certain, uh, you know, a certain budget, uh, it was my job to make sure that all of those things ran as planned uh, and that we kind of stayed on budget, stayed on target. 
uh, and hit all of our goals. Uh, basically, organizing um, runs deep in my blood outside of work. Uh, you could ask my partner and he would say that, you know, that's kind of my number one thing. I'm very, very organized, I'm meticulous, uh, and I really enjoy being that way because I find that next to communication, organization, especially in a job, is extremely important. Um, I'm sure that there are several people that this job entails working amongst uh, and besides, and as such, I can imagine that organization is very, very important for that. Um, with regard to, um, I know you said organization, and then I'm sorry, what was your next part? It's research, but before we go on to research, I'm just going to ask you, um, so with 150, um, you know, contractors across the nation, so like what, in your opinion, was sort of like the key to keeping all those contracts and um, goals and, you know, all the different sort of data points that you needed to hit for individual con contracts? Like, how did you, like, what was the key thing that kept it all sort of running or, or organized on your end? Um, extremely transparent communication. So making sure that my subordinates were aware of what needed to happen when, and then also to make sure that they were in constant communication with technicians who were going out to fulfill these jobs. Um, in addition to that, lots and lots of uh, spreadsheets and lots and lots of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then uh, feel free to go on to the, the research end of it all. So like yeah. your, your experience with research. So research, um, I have not worked in the legal field. I know that there's a lot of research that goes on in, um, in the legal field. Uh, most of my, any of my experience that has been in legal, I was a receptionist at a legal firm uh, quite a while ago. Um, regards to research, it would probably be mostly in my MBA program. We do a whole lot of research for, um, you know, any types of writing papers that we do, whether they're um, case studies or just really anything in the program is largely based on research. Um, with regards to research at jobs that I have done, it's mainly been um, to get an understanding of projections. So how long jobs should take, um, essentially the amount of people that they'll take to do the job, uh, the, you know, kind of the logistics of how to plan a job previous to budgeting and planning it. So that sounds to me that you, you have the ability to sort of um, uh, look at examples of previous work and, and mine it for its component parts and then uh, take it from there. I'd like and to think replicating so. those pieces. Yes. All right, great. I, I'm all set then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lucia. Councillor Hernandez. Hi, Nuria, and thank you for joining us in the City Council of Holyoke and for, you, you know, thinking of us as a, a, your employment opportunity. Um, I'm also sticking to the same question um, in all fairness and for consistency purposes. And my question is, um, what do you consider yourself to be as it relates to your knowledge with Microsoft Office Suites, um, intermediate, no, beginner, intermediate, or advanced? And then can you give me an example of the way that you um, organize information? As you mentioned, you're very familiar with using um, spreadsheets. Can you give us an example of how you um, organize that information within those spreadsheets? And how do you um, then um, find the information to provide upon request? Sure. Um, so basically with... Um, I'm so sorry, I'm getting, I'm thinking of the, the question and not answering from the beginning. Um, oh, goodness. Okay, my familiarity. So I yes. would say uh, advanced with Microsoft Office Suites in its entirety pretty much. No, we, we, lost, lost. we lost your voice, <laughs> Nuria. Do you hear us? Oh. Um, I am minimally familiar with Teams, but I haven't. I'm sorry, to... Nuria. Yes. Do you hear us? We yes. lost like your first explanation. I'm so sorry. Oh no. The That's beginning okay. part of it, we 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 couldn't hear you. That's I don't okay. know if you try to recreate it. Yes, we can hear okay. you. 
Excellent. Yeah, so I'm uh, quite familiar with Microsoft Office Suites. Um, I'm familiar with Outlook, uh, Google Drive, Excel, Word, uh, PowerPoint. I'm also familiar with Prezi from doing, um, from doing shows for uh, my master's program through there. Uh, the only one I would say I'm not too familiar with is uh, Microsoft Teams. And then with regards to um, my example of organizing and how to kind of organize and pull information out as needed, um, I find that I organize differently based on who is going to be utilizing the information that I'm organizing. Um, naturally, if you have a bunch of information organized and party A doesn't need all the same info as party C, I will organize it differently. Um, I, I personally like to do a lot of color coding um, alphabetics. Uh, so I kind of organize things that way based on who they're going to. So I typically have a whole onslaught of spreadsheets uh, based on who's needing what information. And I pull it that way. I find that it's easier than having like one large master unless everyone needs to access that one. And hearing that you um, work with projections and budgets, I assume that, um, or perhaps you can tell me, um, do you have experience like with formulas and conditional formatting in the Excel database sheets? I do. Okay, great. Yeah, not, not extensive, but I have enough to do, like I said, some uh, forecasting and budgeting. And then I also did a lot of, um, in, in a business master's program, you do a whole lot of uh, accounting courses all the way up to managerial uh, accounting um, and managerial financial accounting. So that is heavily reliant on Excel knowledge. So that helped. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, is anybody else, any other questions? Uh, yeah, Councilor uh, Gladys and LeBron. Hi, welcome Noria. And thank you. thank you for coming tonight uh, for your interview. So I, I would also stay with the same questions for all candidates and I wanna ask you, um, what do you consider is one of your strengths? I'm also going to ask you what is what else you consider to be one of your weakness. Can you answer that strength first, please? Sure. So I would say that a strength of mine is my ability to build connections with people. Um, I try to be quite unbiased and kind of take people um, as they are and try to understand their viewpoint, even if it's not my own or even if I'm not familiar with what we're really talking about. Um, I find that, uh, I'll mention it again, I think communication is largely important in personal and professional relationships. So I think that having the ability to communicate effectively um, and be understanding of people, whether like you or different to you, is extremely important, and I find that to be a strength of mine. What would you consider be one of your weakness? weakness? <clears throat> Oh, geez. Um, probably my attention to detail. Um, it's a blessing and a curse. I essentially, um, I'm really good at the, the finite points of anything, and I have to kind of check myself to make sure that I don't let it bog me down. Um, <clears throat> I always finish a project, but if I don't check myself regularly, which I've learned to do through being in a master's program and having deadlines, um, I can get a little bit behind. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty tough on myself. So that that's a weakness as well, I think. Okay. If we were to contact your peers, what would they say about Nolia? Um, I would say they would probably say that I am responsible respectful um, professional peers would say that I'm very efficient and uh, detail oriented. Um, I really pride myself on getting the job done uh, and doing it right and trying to be as efficient as possible in doing it. Okay, thank you. Thank you for thank the questions. You. Thank you. Okay, so I see Councillor McGivern's hand up first and then we have Councillor uh, Thinking. Thank you, Councillor Lacey. It's Leahy. Councilor McGinty, it's Leahy. Thank you, Councilor McGinty. <laughs> don't worry about it, Jim. <laughs> Noria, don't worry about us, but welcome. And we appreciate you Thank answering you. our questions and, and putting up with us, because that's a big part about this job. <laughs> um, my question kind of leads into a theme that I call people skills. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been mentioned about the 13 people that are on the city council, but I'm more interested in 
hearing from you how you work with the public at large or with uh, clients or with people that you have to deal with with the different jobs you've had. I've noticed you've, you've been a server, you, you're an operation managers, your skill set is right in line with what we're looking for. Your poise is fantastic. Thank you. But tell us how you deal with people, especially when people can be a little bit uh, disgruntled. Certainly. Um, I think that in dealing with people, you have to put yourself in their shoes. So whether you're dealing with someone who's extremely happy with the service they've received or the explanation they're getting, or you're dealing Muted. You're muted. She's not muted. I think she just has a poor connection. Uh, amongst the public is knowing how to kind of reel that emotion in and put yourself in their shoes and be communicative and respectful and um, probably be open to learning because I'm certainly not the best at everything. I'm sure many of you would say that you're not the best at everything. Uh, we all have our strengths and weaknesses. So I think focusing on learning um, from other people allows me to be a good person to deal with the public. I feel strongly in my ability to understand others. Thank you. Um, we heard the first part of your answer and the last part of your answer. Um, if everybody's okay, I heard what I needed to hear. I can repeat but, um, it you like. Very excellent answer. Um, Mary, I'm, I think in the job description, or if you don't know, that the hours of this job are kind of, they're kind of flex hours, but they're along with our schedule, which can be evenings on certain parts of the week, and then no evenings on other other week, weeks, weekdays. Are you flexible enough to work these, these hours? And do you, is this salary enough to meet your needs or will you be working other part-time jobs? No, this um, the salary as it was posted in the job posting um, is is enough to meet my needs. Um, I am comfortable with the hours. I have a really great support system. Um, my partner is actually an educator in the city of Holyoke, born and raised, um, and he's he's wonderful, very supportive. So uh, I have his help there, and I have family to help with the children as well. So we're very blessed in that way. Thank you, and, and thank you for your candid answers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Vacant. You're muted, Councillor Vacant. Thank you. Um, you got a little sample of the um, repartee between the councillors in, in our little meeting tonight. Um, sometimes things can get very passionate and um, sometimes heated among the 13. Um, some of us liken um, in the role that you're seeking it to be somewhat like herding cats to try to uh, work through all of our different approaches, philosophies, and personalities. Um, you've done quite a, a fair job of answering my general question about working for the 13 bosses, if, if you will. Um, but I'm a little interested to understand how you think you might work your way through a real heated situation with various personalities. Sure. So um, I think that as the position states, you know, this is really a support position. But at the same time that I'm supporting you all, I want to learn from you all. Part of being in any job, I think, is growth. And that's my goal in anything that I do. So. It's, it's kind of funny how some people refer to passion as a negative thing sometimes. I think passion can be a really positive thing, um, especially when you're dealing with people who are essentially speaking for the public. Um, if you're passionate about the things that you're talking about, that's a great thing because it means that you care. And I think that's what a community really needs. Hello. What happened now? Gladys, Gladys you're on on you. Oh, let me call you back. I'm sorry. Guys, I'm very sorry, sorry. Okay, no okay. Um, I think that passion is a really positive thing, and I think that this city needs positivity. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a wonderful city, it's a wonderful place that needs people that are passionate about doing good in it. Um, so if there's a heated argument, my, my first step until I know you all really well would probably be to take 
half a step back and open my ears and listen and hear where you all are coming from and what I can learn from you. Um, I have no qualms about, you know, uh, chiming in where my expertise is, you know, if you ask that of me, if you want my opinion, if you need my opinion, but if not, I'm here to support you all and just learn from you all. Um, again, I think that passion is a really good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, Councillor uh, Murphy. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Nuria, for applying and your interest. Uh, I'm gonna ask you the same question I asked, but I'm gonna ask you one. Of so you're working on a master's degree right now? Yes, sir. And is that a part-time? Yes, it is. And is so it I evenings, do, weekends? I do one class per eight weeks. So um, it turns out to a two-year program. So I do one class per eight weeks and it's all online. So I do the work at you know my leisure as long as it gets done. Okay, thank you very much. And then the other question. So assuming you get this job and assuming at some point you're gonna leave this job, uh, what would you like to be able to say that you accomplished while you were on the job? Sure. Um, I, I would like first and foremost to fulfill the requirements of the job and support you all uh, in the way that you need me to. Um, I would also like to have felt as though I have made a difference. Um, I, I grew up in a different community, as I mentioned. I grew up in Wilbraham. It's much different um, from Holyoke. In the last three years, having lived here in Holyoke and, you know, uh, being um, working very closely with uh, someone who works in education, my partner, like I said, works in education here in the city, I've learned a huge amount about um, the differences in the communities and how the city has, you know, such dedicated people that work so hard to constantly uh, be more, you know, culturally responsive and understand each other and the diversity. Like, I didn't grow up with, with that. Where I grew up, it was pretty much, everyone was kind of the same. And living here has opened my eyes hugely to that. So I would like to, you know, essentially learn more about this community, serve this community, serve the youth of the community, um, help to serve the, you know, the underrepresented people of this community. And uh, in the meantime, I have two young children to kind of show them that diversity that I never knew. All right, thank you very much. Good luck. Uh, anybody else have any further questions? Do you have any questions for us? Uh, ooh, I don't think so. Um, I don't. All right, so let me just tell you how the process is then. So uh, after tonight, um, uh, our next uh, regular city council meeting is um, next Wednesday night, and so at that point, all the city councilors have the option of voting for whoever they would like at that point. Um, so, Councilor Ray, um, I had a question. Yeah. Okay, Councilor Granny. I'm sorry, I was I was on mute. Uh, yes, uh, Ms. Sotoropoulos, I believe it is. Yes, sir. Uh, I just have a, a, a question on, once again, on your education. I'm a little, conf I'm not sure what it is, but you list an MBA in bilingual oh, on I, the last thing. I, I, I don't that know what that is. I think that was an error. Um, I, I meant to put bilingual. I am bilingual. I speak Spanish. I actually grew up in Mexico. I didn't speak English until I was nine. Um, my, my, my master's degree is not in bilingual studies. It's, uh, it's an MBA. So it's a master's of business administration. I will have it uh, next September. And my undergraduate degree also from Bay Path University is in business. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So um, you just said you didn't grow up in a diverse culture. I think Mexico is very diverse. Well, I moved here when I was nine. I moved to the U.S. when I was nine. So from the time I was nine until I was 27, I lived in Wolverham. Nice. Okay. Um, since I don't see any other questions, um, so what we're going to have um, next two or next Wednesday, I should say, we're going to vote on this. Every counselor gets a vote, um, and uh, after that, the person will be sworn in. Uh, respectful of time and whatnot, it's been brought up. And certainly, would um, uh, let, let the person have their two weeks. Um, that's just the very thing to do. Um, okay, Ryan, thank you very much. Thank you, Glass. Yeah, yeah, Jim. Not 
Thank you. Thank you for your time. After she get off, can I just say something for a minute to you guys for a minute, please? Absolutely. Of course, absolutely. But having said that, um, Ryan, can you, um, in fact, you could just hang up now. Um, you don't have to stick around for us any longer. Thank you. Thank you, Nuria. Thank you so much. Hi. Just right, because, yeah. just, right, just, just, yeah, just because I just noticed she was the only one who received the information how well the process will be to be um, elected as a candidate, that we must do that for all of them. Or otherwise, those who we missed, can we let them know that the process is going to be that way? Please? I think I've been doing it all along. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't hear I didn't hear for the other ones. Sorry, I, my, I maybe. Did it probably several times before the meeting started. Okay, okay. TV. My certainly, apologies. Uh, certainly we can rehash that, that's not a problem. Okay, thank you. Um, not, no worries. Um, so Ryan, um, I believe if my memory serves me correctly, we have Tamara. Yeah, Jim, so we have uh, Tamira and um, Demi in the waiting room, but we are just a little bit behind schedule, so I thought maybe we could just at least bring them both in, explain to them where we're at, and uh, just tell Demi she'll just have to wait a few more minutes, because I think we had Demi in for 720 at 734 now. You know, yeah, just that's a good point. No, and we also have uh, Maria, so we have Tamara, Demi, then Maria, right? Yes, Maria has not been in the waiting room. I haven't seen her yet. So, um, but I, if you can send me her phone number, I can maybe reach out and see if she missed something. Yeah, I texted it to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so um, hi, hello everyone. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting up, you know, in the green room there. Uh, but what we're doing is um, we're just kind of uh, falling a little bit behind. Um, um, I think I'm asking too many questions. Maybe I don't know. But um, we just wanted to bring you back live again, just to, so you didn't think we were forgetting about you. Now we're going to bring you. Up back into the green room and uh, we're going to continue on with uh, actually we're going to Demi we're going to move you back and keep uh, is it Tamar? Tamara yes. Tamara okay Tamara. All right Ryan do your magic. All right okay so what we're doing here is uh, we're the city council this public <laughs> service uh, subcommittee uh, we're interviewing the people who applied the sent in resumes uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to allow you to give uh, feedback, not feedback, we're going to allow you to give, um, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, that sort of thing. Then the city council uh, counselors will uh, entertain some questions with you, and then you can certainly ask us any questions. And having said that, um, next wow. Wednesday night is our full city council meeting, and we will uh, then vote. Each counselor will have the opportunity to vote for whoever he or she uh, would like. Uh, so having said that, uh, welcome. Um, Thank you Thank for uh, applying and just give us some feedback about yourself. Give us uh, your background. Yes, hello, my name is Tamara Garcia. I'm a current graduate of Bay Path University, so I'm class of 2020. I just graduated graduated with my Bachelor's of Science in Legal Studies, um, and I also gained a paralegal certificate. Throughout my collegiate years at Bay Path, I had the opportunity to do a lot of legal work um, with my goal of becoming an attorney. Um, I do have to take the LSATs and go to law school, which is definitely my end uh, goal result. Um, during my time at Bay Path University, I participated in a um, few internships, one with um, the Springfield District Court um, and one with the Springfield Housing Court, um, which allowed me to build on my skills um, and which I believe um, will be a part of a big factor in who I am and um, me gaining experience in the legal world and me gaining um, the knowledge that I need. Um, sorry, I would consider myself um, to be someone who is very um, detail oriented, someone who um, pays attention to the quality of their work, um, who um, prides myself in being someone who presents their best work and their best self in everything that they do. Um, someone who goes back to the drawing board when I need to refix stuff, revamp things. I'm always looking for comments and feedback about how to improve myself um, to be better in whatever position or um, wherever, wherever I am. I also um, would consider myself to be very um, good at timing and being very just well organized when it comes to managing time and managing scheduling. I've been in many positions um, in my food service industry experience where I've been a supervisor or been a leader of a team. So I've had experience managing others, managing breaks, um, scheduling and, and things of that nature. Sure. Um, and also, oh, sorry. 
No, that's okay. No. Okay. So, uh, lastly, I want to say that um, I definitely do have a strong um, abilities in my researching skills, um, my ability to anticipate questions, um, or even being asked questions, and then doing that research in order to find um, and gain the answers to the questions being asked. That's excellent. And uh, going through your resume now, you do have uh, you have a nice resume. My wife Eileen, she was a prosecutor in the Springfield District Court and then the Superior Court for close to ten years or so. Nice. Uh, great, great great place to work um, down the road, but we're talking about this job now. Yes. <laughs> Having said that, uh, do any uh, counselors have any questions? We'll start with the committee first. Okay, Counselor uh, Lisi. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Tamira. Thanks so much for coming. And um, you already spoke a little bit about how you do have um, research skills and you have like an, an ability to research, um, sorry, anticipate questions and do some research to help yourself prepare in that way. I think that research is definitely one of the key facets of this position. Um, research along with organization skills. Um, and I would love for you to um, somewhat like flesh out and give an example of, um, you know, where you were able to do some research. Um, like what sort of project did you do research on and, and how you pulled your information together? Um, and the same thing with uh, your organizational skills. Can you give an example of um, some sort of project that you, you know, pulled in and kept different pieces of in information organized and easy to access? Yes. Um, so at first, I want to answer that researching question. So an example where I feel like I applied my researching skills a lot was um, in my internship at Marzula Law Firm. While I, while I attended DC, I mean, attended, sorry, while I attended Bay Path, I had the opportunity to go to DC for a semester um, where I went to American University. Um, and there, you know, you took courses at the university and you did an internship, which um, applied to your undergraduate years at your home school which was Bay Path. So um, during my time there, I, I did do an internship at Marzula Law Firm, which was an environmental law firm. Um, I didn't know a lot about environmental law. So a lot of the times when we got new cases and there was a new problem within the case, I did have to do a lot of researching just to know about the statue and just problem, just thinking about, you know, what the client needs and um, things of that nature. Um, but a specific time in um, research that I would say um, we were drafting a memo and I don't, I can't recall which statue it was for, but we were um, drafting a memo for court and we were looking at specific statues and how we could use that that um, in the case to further our argument. So um, in that particular instance, you know, you have to go look at, you know, it was, um, the court was in um, the Fifth Circuit, the Federal Circuit. Um, so I had to look at, you know, federal laws and look at how this law applied to the client's circumstance and their situation and how we could use it um, to defend our argument and defend our claim. And so a time in organization, um, that I would say um, was definitely, uh, which I don't think is on my um, resume, but it was kind of an older time. Um, I was at Mass Mutual. I was an intern for Mass Mutual during my high school years. Um, I did that from my sophomore year to my senior year of high school um, at, at Mass Mutual. I worked in the USIG Client Services Department, and a lot of our work um, involved. We were transforming digital copies, or hard copies, into digital copies, and that kind that work was being done in amongst other things. So we would kind of go back to that when we got a chance. So we'd have to keep very organized and detailed a spreadsheet of what was already completed, what files had already been moved to um, hard copies and which one needed to be in digital copies. So we had to keep a very organized list of that. And at the time, this was back in maybe 2012. So it was so many files, you know, because they were dating back from years on. Um, and I was one of the only interns who stayed on for three years. So that was a task that I picked up every, every year um, of just keeping track. And so that was like an organizational task that I had to do over time. That's a really great example. And I appreciate you uh, sort of digging it up on the fly here. So thank you so much. Anybody else have any other questions? Uh, uh, Councilor Hernandez? Thank you so much, Ms. Garcia, for coming to our interview and for considering Holyoke for your employment opportunities. Um, and my question um, has to do with uh, Microsoft Office knowledge. Um, do you consider yourself to be a beginner, intermediate, or advanced user of the Microsoft Office suite? And if so, after you answer that first part, can you give me an example of how you organize um, large amounts of information 
and how do you identify and then um, locate it to produce it as a result if somebody requests it from you? Yes, so I would definitely consider myself to be more um, a proficient in Microsoft Office in general as a whole, including suites. Um, I'm not ad advanced, but th through my years and through my co uh, collegiate experience, I definitely have gained a lot of Microsoft Office uh, experience and just tips and things like that. So as far as Microsoft Suites go, I feel like the best way to organize um, something in order for you to keep pulling from that is to create um, files and you know naming the files creating its own separate files and um, making sure that um, all the documents are dated. Um, they're dated, they have the file name, um, and they're just in a space, in a in a folder, in a space that's very specific to what you're looking for so that you don't have to, you know, dig through files or scroll necessarily, that whatever, whatever you're looking for is in a folder, um, particular shared folder where everyone can view it. Okay, thank you. And, well, before I, I um, finalize the question, you did mention spreadsheets. So do you um, organize information like on Excel, part of the yes, Microsoft? I'm okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, does anybody else have any questions? Okay, I see Gladys. Yes. Again, Ms. Garcia, thank you for taking the time to come for this interview. My question to you, I think you covered some of it, but I, I like to still ask the question. What would you consider is your strength and what is your weakness, if you can share? Yes. I think my greatest um, strength is my adaptability. I'm a, a very good at adapting to whatever environment I am. Um, no matter what the circumstances are, what the obstacles are, I have a... Um, I'm very ambitious, I'm very goal-oriented, so my ability to adapt and um, just in order to make the workspace better, to make the work environment better, um, my just ability to like understand and familiarize myself with protocols in order to just be efficient, as efficient as possible at my job would definitely be one of my strengths. As far as weaknesses go, one of my weaknesses that I've noticed um, throughout the years, um, I don't often like to ask for help. I try to, you know, I might, you, one of the council members might ask me to do something, another member might ask me, and it all, might all be done in the same day. And I'm gonna try to tackle as much as I can by myself. And that's one of the things I have to work on is really just being vocal when maybe things are overloading because I like to, to challenge myself. And I do like to, you know, even sometimes it may seem exhausted myself, but I'm really just trying to challenge myself. And so sometimes I don't ask for help maybe when I do need it or, so, or things like that. Sorry. If we were to call your peers in your in your past um, work history or internships, what would they say about you? I definitely think they would say that I was a very um, strong leader, that I was very proactive. Um, I always came to work. I was I would definitely come to work as a starter. I don't, you know, sit around and wait for tasks. I know I come to work trying to, you know, focus on what I can do or what I should be doing, being very proactive, trying to um, make they would say that I tried to, you know, better the work environment, that I, you know, um, exert myself in a way that helps everyone and is beneficial to everyone and that I'm a team player for sure. Thank you. I see Councillor Vacant hand is up. Go ahead. Councillor McGivern. Thank you. I unmuted this time. <laughs> So um, the standard question I'm asking each applicant relates to the getting along with people because you're working with 13 different counselors. We come from some of us different areas of the city, different perspectives, philosophies, and representing different areas, some of us. And sometimes things get very passionate and People can have very strong feelings about various matters. And how do you think you would feel about um, dealing with that variation and variety of people and personalities? 
Well, I'll tell you something. I'm one of seven. So oh. I am the sixth <laughs> child. So I am used to a lot of personalities, even from my home life, just to school and everything. I've I've been around and being able to adapt to different personalities, understanding that people are different, um, trying to understand people. I, I would want to get to know all the council members in their individual individuality, what they like, how they like to communicate, how they like things done so that I could find, you know, my niche in every, you know, in every aspect of how, how things work for you, for you all, you know, and try to, I would tailor, tailor how I um, work with you all to your, your needs and your desires. And that's kind of how I feel like being effective, um, being community or people oriented, you have to understand how to work with others, how to take in, um, listen to feedback and just knowing the person. So I think like gaining a, a good relationship and understanding you guys' needs and desires will help me best um, in working with, with you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, next I have uh, Counselor uh, Murphy. That's muted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and is it Tim Timera? Tamara, yes. Back and, uh, Councilor Murphy, you're still muted. Let's try that again. Yes. Okay. We're good now, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. So uh, two things, and I, I know you're interested in going to law school, so I'm going to ask that because I didn't know that in the beginning. So. Is that something you're looking to do next year, five yeah, years? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely um, taking the entire gap year. I do um, want to start and get some knowledge, um, experience in either the courtrooms or a job like this in city council. So I was taking a, a year off, um, maybe even two, um, but I do plan on pursuing law school. Winnick is a great school and we're sistered with Bay Path. Um, so Winnick was, is definitely a high, priority list for me trying to get into Winnick. Um, but yes, I'm very interested in law school. It, it'd be somewhere a little bit down the future. I do want to take time off. Then the other thing would be, uh, so if you're doing that, is that, would that interfere with this job? I mean, would that be, is that part time? Do you know? Um, when I do decide to do it, I definitely there's there's night um um sorry there's night law school um and there's courses you can take at night and that's kind of what I plan to do anyways because I did plan to work while going to law school I provide for myself so I definitely need a source of income um so while attending law school I definitely will be working in some degree and do plan on doing night school at night and um as far as working goes, um, I can tell you that during my undergraduate year, there was a time where I had three jobs. There was a time where I had two jobs and working an internship. There was times where I had two internships and two jobs. Like I'm not a person who, who ever stops my goals. Um, and I never, you know, if I have a set goal in mind, I, I finish it out to the end. Um, whether that be law school, whether I be fortunate enough to get this position, I definitely make sure I made it work. Okay, and one last question. So assuming you get the job and you work with us for a few yes. years, uh, what would you like to be able to say you accomplished when it's all said and done? I wanna say that I, that I was able to build on my skills um, that, I, that I need for law school, that I was able to give back to my community by even servicing you guys and, and being a part of something so major really. Um, I want to be able to say that I'm a better researcher, I'm a better writer, that I um, understand politics way more now, you know, um, all the, everything that this experience can offer, I feel like is going to be so beneficial towards my future because this is the avenue which I'm pursuing. Okay, thank you very much. Good thank luck. you so much. Councilor McGivern. Thank you, Council Lady. Um, Tamara. Mm. He's muted. Joel, you're muted. Yes, I was. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I like that feature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you put it on? No. <laughs> oh, but I wish I could. The co-host did. Uh, Sorry, Tamara. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, thank you. And just taking what Councillor Bacon was talking about, working with 13 people to a uh, a, a different level of what I call people skills and you certainly have a lot of enthusiasm you've given some wonderful answers and I, I want to see what you feel is your 
your skills when it comes to working with other people connected to the city council, meaning public at large, people that call in, department heads, people that you need to be able to uh, decipher, you know, they might be a little disgruntled, but to be able to decipher what they're looking for and to be able to connect, connect it back to us. Can you talk about that for a minute? Yes, I'll give you actually an, a good example of that too. Um, I got a lot of um, people skills and got very people oriented during my work at the Springfield Housing Court. Um, and um, you might guys may know, but community legal aid aid assist the people in the Springfield um, community in the greater area who are um, suffering from loss of their homes, uh, for foreclosure, they're um, being evicted and things like that. So I had to work a lot with the general public of Springfield um, and not just the general public, but people like myself, minorities, people who have struggled and been impoverished. Um, and that opportunity alone allowed me to to understand the position that I was in and understand the position that them as a people were in. You know, they were coming, seeking, you know, help from community legal aid, um, me being an intern there. So I, you know, in my perspective of it, I had to, I had to connect with these people, with people in a different way because, you know, this was, this is an emotional law. This is housing. This is affecting their lives. Um, and I was doing something that could potentially help them. Um, and so as far as my role goals, as well as being people oriented and being um, invested in people and community wise, I'm very um, passionate about that, about um, understanding people, connecting with people. Um, um, I, I want to say that growing up, um, not just with the seven family members, but my mother as well, she is a um, a pastor so you know the congregation themselves um and my church family so i just have a lot of i'm definitely rooted in community and um teamwork and team building so anything that involves people i feel like i excel really well in because i am a people person um and i can even even in the biggest of differences connect with someone in any kind of way or you know just have that respect for them so i definitely feel like as far as um my people skills and my interaction goes with others that i'm very good at interacting with other people i i, I have no doubt i mean you're the number six of seven i'm the first of five and then i get yeah. that my grandmother was the oldest of 16. yes so, i mean it's big families make it a, a demand you have, good have to be too. outgoing, yes. So you're getting picked on. <laughs> and, and I also work in Hoyoke District Court as a probation officer, very closely with the victim, victim witness advocate program. Yes. And I'm sure I know I'm most of the program. people you work with in spring. Yes. Folks. Just that one semester is a lot of experience that's worth uh, worth more than you can tell people. But that's that's incredible. So I do want to ask one more area. Yes. Um, and Councilor Murphy talked about you, if you, when you go back to school, which is great. And you talked about, you know, night classes too. Are you familiar with the demand on this job in terms of hours? It's kind of a crazy flex schedule because yes, I yes, I um when reviewing the job, I did see that you know right now you guys are looking for full time hours that there might be um going out to you know run errands and being available and being you know very present in this job. And right now. The, uh, right now this opportunity would be amazing because I literally don't have anything on my plate really I'm just graduating um, it's been very hard to find work um, via the because of the pandemic um, so I would be a hundred percent invested into this I wouldn't have anything but time really um, and like I said this would be an opportunity that you know I take and run with it because this would be so amazing just for my future just to have and just to accomplish really so it, it wouldn't be something that I take lightly or wouldn't be something that I have to put into my schedule this would be my schedule you know this would be my you know the start to my career really this is the early start to my career so and this is a would be a milestone for me so not taking it as as far not being you know that just be a waste on my part, which I would never do. I'm definitely fully committed. Thank you, and, and very well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, well, thank you very much for your enthusiasm. I think Councilor Graney has a question. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for uh, uh, coming tonight, uh, Tamara. Thank you. Uh, I'm very interested in the educational aspect of, of our prospective uh, administrative assistant. And I was I was wondering on the under awards and accomplishments, you have the Horace Smith Fund scholarship. I'm somewhat familiar with the Horace Smith Fund. I wasn't aware that they granted scholarships. Could you oh, help yeah. me out? 
Oh, yes. So I actually, and not only do they grant scholarships, but they grant it for your entire um, your entire undergraduate year. Horace Smith was one of like one of the most amazing scholarships that I got because it lasted so long. I didn't have to re reapply or anything like that. My freshman year, um, my freshman year of college, um, I had received the scholarship based off um, academics, um, my performance in school and all the activities that I was in um, during my high school years. And that uh, scholarship and that money kind of like trickle down every year um, and it was just beyond helpful and all you had to do is you know keep your grades up um, I was in the National Honors um, Society for the Legal Studies program um, throughout my time at Bay Path I was on the Dean's list almost every semester at Bay Path um, so Horace Smith that foundation that foundation um, in general and just in general in that program it was so helpful um, my mom's a single mother so it was just amazing to have that money coming in and it was just like all you had to do just keep your grades up and just you know keep being proactive in your school community and you received it so that was it was amazing honestly okay thank you thank you okay thank you okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, have a full city council meeting which is next wednesday night and at that time every counselor will have the opportunity to vote um, whoever gets the majority votes will essentially, I guess, win that position as an administrative assistant. At this time, do you have any questions for us? I do have two questions for you. Go ahead. Um, I know we were talking a little bit about the um, technologies, and as a law student, I've, I've used different technology programs like Westlaw, Lexis, more of legal programs. So I wanted to know, like, what technologies are you guys using, especially with COVID now? Um, and what collaborative, other than uh, you guys are probably using Microsoft Suites, but what other collaborative maybe um, programs are you guys using to keep in touch with one another? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, text messaging. Zoom. Yeah, love that. Um, <laughs> I did file an order um, some time ago, and uh, I spoke to um, um, Michael Hoover um, regarding updating our software for a uh, city council or such as you know, in Boston or whatnot. You know, it just, it's kind of, um, if we file an order now, we really never have any idea where it went or what happened to it. So, you know, I think down the road, I think uh, we are going to um, enhance our software. But right now it's basically, you know, Microsoft suite products, you know, Excel, um, Times PowerPoint. But I, I don't think it's anything that we probably haven't done already. Right, okay, awesome. Uh, um, and then, Okay, maybe I have two more questions, but they're going to be quick. <laughs> so the other question I had was, um, how, what do you guys see for like a 30-day, 60-day, 90-day period for an early starter like myself in the onboarding process? I know with COVID, you know, I wouldn't be oh. probably going into the office like that. So how would that work? Yeah, so obviously it's uh, this time is different than any other time. But um, what we would probably have you do is work closely um, uh, with our admin right now. Uh, Ryan and I think that you'd probably spend time with other department heads um, whether it's virtually or if it's in person you know socially distant six feet that sort of thing try to get a good feel of exactly what all the department heads do and how um, how we interact we the city council interact with the department heads so I think the first you know three days to seven days um, it would be just kind of um, the bare minimum but then after that um, start actually um, uh, working with Ryan. Ryan, fortunately, is staying with the city. He's just working in a different department. And so um, I'm sure Councilor President Todd McGee, who is the president of the city council, would probably come up with some sort of syllabus for you. Um, because twofold. One is, um, would it be fair to you just saying, here's your job and run with it? That's not going to happen. We'll certainly have, um, I guess for lack of better words, a syllabus type of thing. Yes. Nice. Um, and this is the last question. Um, David, uh, Councilman David Bartley did send us an email. He wouldn't be in the Zoom meeting tonight. Um, I didn't get back to him, but I will get back to him tonight. I hope that's okay. His message actually got in my spam. He couldn't be here tonight. He told us to email him, but okay. yeah. That's fine. That's fair enough. I think Councilor Lucy had one last question. Um, it wasn't a question. I just wanted to respond to some of the questions that uh, Tamira had. So, um, one really funny thing about this job is that um, you have 13 bosses in the sense that you have 13 city councilors, but we actually are all employed elsewhere. And this is a, you know, sort of like a part-time service gig that yeah. we were doing. And so um, 
it's not like we would be overseeing your day-to-day operations. It would only be the city council president, and that's what Councilor Leahy was sort of uh, alluding to with uh, Councilor Todd McGee. He's our council president, so he would be the one working most closely with the new hiree to develop a sort of training plan, um, and that would happen alongside of Ryan, um, who's presently in the position and transi- transitioning out. Um, and then additionally, uh, you know, we don't have any sort of um, database within, um, you know, there's no research database for like ordinances, municipal yeah. ordinances, but there is the Mass um, uh, Municipal, Massachusetts Municipal Association, and they serve as sort of like a clearinghouse for, you know, best practices and, and uh, resources. There's also a number of sort of issue specific organizations that hold um, information about like transportation or you know whatever the niche yeah. issues are um, but there's no there's no you know ready-made Lexis Nexus yeah yes uh, or, you know or Westlaw to just sort of dig into it, it really is um, you know mining uh, some of these organizations that exist on the state level to find um, the resources that we need definitely definitely okay. thank you thank you Council Lisi for summarizing my comments um, all right, so once again, it was a pleasure meeting you. Um, yes. Look nice forward to uh, seeing you hopefully soon. Um, Ryan, at this time, um, I think uh, we have Demi up, I believe. And I'm also to like leave out of the chat, right? I don't have to stay yes, in the no, room. No, yes. All right, great. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you again so Good. much for the oh, opportunity. Turn yeah. on. You know, the one thing I do, I do have one last question because I didn't see on your, um, your resume. Where do you live? You I live in Holyoke. I'm a Holyoke resident, yes. Been here for two okay. years. All right, great. Have a great night. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you guys. All right, perfect. All right, do we have um, Demi? See the last one? This is Councilor Graney. No, it's not me. Is that what you're asking? I asked, yeah, is she the last one? No. Uh, No, do we have one other person, uh, Maria? Okay, yeah. Thank you. So, Demi, I see you joined us. Welcome. Hi, I've actually been in six, and then I actually emailed Hector, and I was like, "Can you just turn up your volume or speak a little bit closer to your microphone?" Oh yes, can you hear me now? A little bit better. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I emailed Hector, and I was like, "Oh no! Like, did I miss the interview? Because I haven't been let into the waiting room yet." And then it had been like ten, fifteen minutes. And then I finally saw you guys, and so I emailed him back and said, please disregard this email. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so I'm Jim Leahy. Um, I'm the chair of the Public Service Subcommittee. And tonight we have a bunch of different city councilors on, and as you can see their names underneath. Um, and also on the committee is Councilor Rebecca Lisi and also Councilor Libby Hernandez. Um, so what the process tonight is we're going to ask, uh, first you're going to give us a background of yourself and your prior experiences. Then um, uh, we, the counselor, get to uh, ask you some questions. Then we'll give you um, some sort of uh, time to, if you have any questions for us. Next Wednesday is the full city council meeting, and that's when each counselor gets to vote on uh, he or she's uh, person that they want to fill this position. And that's how it works. So having said all that, why don't you just give us some background? We have your uh, resume, but why don't you give us some background uh, on you? Okay, um, nice to meet everybody, by the way. <laughs> Um, so my name's Demi. Um, I currently am doing my master's at AIC um, in public health. I got my undergrad, um, two bachelor's degrees, one in um, public health and then one in sociology. Um, I have a lot of um, experience in administrative assistant um, positions as well as community service, um, working with um, public health organizations. Um, Right now, currently, I actually work down the street from um, city council (laughs) at the dispensary. Um, It's funny, I've actually met the mayor a couple times. (laughs) Um, But yeah. I, feel like I don't I, think you're supposed to tell you uh, tell the people who's going to the dispensary. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Oops. Yeah. yeah well, All right. Um, uh, is any counselors? Uh, I'll start with uh, this public service subcommittee first. Libby or uh, Rebecca? 
Okay, um, Libby, go ahead. Sorry, I had to mute myself. Thank you so much, um, Demi, for taking out your time to interview with us here in Holyoke. Uh, welcome. Uh, my question is, um, as it relates to Microsoft Office, uh, mm -hmm. more technical um, question, what, what do you consider yourself to be a um, beginner, intermediate, or advanced user of the Microsoft Office? And how do you organize your um, work and information within the system and give us an example, please. Um, so I've actually, I've been dealing with Microsoft for a while now, since I've been in school practically my whole life. Um, and I've also used it for a lot of jobs where I'm writing emails or um, assignments, um, sending out data information. So usually I'll, um, like I'll write something, I'll keep it saved in a PDF file or attach it to like my computer so I can always go back into it. Um, and then I'll usually uh, sort those different folders, make sure everything's organized. Um, and I usually use like Google Docs because everything's automatically saved. It's very, it's very simple and easy. Um, but there's also other, other documents and like other um, apps like Microsoft Word that I can use too. It's very easy to convert files to Google Docs and upload them or send them to other people. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Gladys? Hi, Demi. Thank you for taking the time for this interview. So I have I have several questions to ask you. The first one is going to um, be, what is what do you consider to be your strength? And also, what do you consider to be your weakness? What would you say? Um, my strength, I would say, is I'm a very fast learner. I can pick up things very quickly. Um, I'm, I have the ability to work well independently as well as work collaboratively with a team. Um, my weaknesses, I would say, is sometimes I focus a little too much on the small things because I can kind of be like a little, like, not so much as like a perfectionist, but just I like things kind of like a certain way and organize. Um, so I could definitely improve on focusing, sometimes, you know, focusing less on the little things and more on the bigger things. But at the same time, I want to make sure that I'm doing my job correctly to the best of my ability. And um, I like things to come out good rather than, you know, like half ass or just slacked off, you know? <laughs> If we were to contact any of your colleagues or peers in, from the current um, place you are at or in the past, what would they say about you? I think I think everybody would agree that I'm like an outgoing, bubbly person, and I I think I've had a good um, good um, experiences pretty much everywhere, and um, they would say I would make a great addition to your team. <laughs> and that I can work well with almost anybody and get through anything professionally. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I see, uh, I don't see anybody else's hand up. Any folks have any other questions? Oh, okay, Councilor uh, Vacant. Councilor Vacant's muted. I was waiting for the standard order of questions, so I'll jump in. <laughs> um, so in this position, you'd be working with 13 different counselors, a uh, wide variety of personalities, styles, perspectives, philosophies. How would you see yourself interacting in that scenario and setting? Um, so I'm actually, I'm 22, so I, and I work with people of all different ages, and I still feel like I have a lot to learn, and I feel like working with such a diverse um, group of people will allow me to grow as a person individually and to be able to socialize with all of you and enhance, like, my career and just, you know, I love networking and intertwining, like, 
beliefs and socializing and policies and just talking and discussing with everybody and my peers. I think it's a great opportunity to learn from each other. And I'm excited if I ever get to meet you guys in person <laughs> to see what you guys would do. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any other questions? Joseph, Councilor McGivern. Thank you. Demi, thank you for uh, your interest and thank you for coming before us this evening. Um, quick question before I ask my questions. Do you commute to Worcester every day? No, I actually graduated from Worcester. Um, so I did my undergrad in Worcester and currently I'm at AIC in Springfield. Um, but I currently am residing in Granby which is like I, 10 minutes away from. Oh, I was referring to under work experience at Walgreens. Oh, yes. So that was my last current um, pharmacy job. Okay, but it's, it says till present, so it's no longer? No. That was, I don't think, yeah. So I'm not sure if Indeed got the correct, because I found this job listing on Indeed, so I'm not sure if they were able to update the newest one that I had put up which currently right now I work right down the street um, at the dispensary, but I've been looking for a more, um, more of like a career-based job where I feel like I can make more of a difference. And that, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. Just, and I'm just thinking about that commute must be, would be tough. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, my, my question is centered around people skills. And probably that when you did work at Walgreens, this might be a good area to talk about. Um, not just working with 13 city councilors and and but with working with department heads and even more important with the general public who may be calling in and looking for things and and trying to uh, connect you know with us through you. Can you talk about people skills and and I'm sure when you were in the pharmacy you met some great people at the counter. And you oh, met yeah. some people you kind of wish you weren't meeting at the same time, if you know what I mean. But can you talk to us how you handle that? Um, yes, for sure. So there's always a bunch of people that go in and out of the pharmacy, like every day in and out. Um, whether it's, you know, wanting to get their script um, checked or having to call their doctor, their, you know, all of their getting all their medications sorted in order. And sometimes there can be people who are having an off day or they might be a little grumpy. But at the end of the day, we all know that, you know, they're there for a reason. They're there for their health. Um, obviously, everyone's health is important. So we want to make sure that we're just doing what we can to get the job done, get their medication to them as soon as possible. Um, and to just be, you know, as friendly as possible because you don't know what someone's going through on the day-to-day -day basis or why they're getting the certain medication that they are. Could be a mental health issue, could be for pain, you know. Um, so when when I worked there, I feel like I met a lot of people, but overall, I just always tried to stay optimistic. Even if I did get a, like a rude customer, um, there's always like a professional way to handle that. And if it did get to a point where I would have to call like my supervisor or my head pharmacist, then I would. Um, but other than that, I think it was a really good experience, and I learned a lot from them. That's a, that's a good answer. It's a very fair answer. I, I thank you. Are you up to date on the status of the hours of this position you've applied for? It kind of goes hand in hand with the work schedule that we have, being that we work a lot of committee meetings, you know, two, three, sometimes, but not often, four nights a week. Are you familiar with what is required? Um, no, I did. I didn't. I actually, that was one of my questions for you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's happen? it's kind of flex hours. It's it's hard to explain, but um, our current admin, uh, administrative assistant explained it earlier to one of the candidates. You know, there are days where you may not start to noontime, one o'clock, knowing that there's going to be a committee or a full city council committee meeting in the evening. And of course, you would you know take your your break and take your a dinner hour or so and then come back and work you know work the meetings with us and then there are days where we have nothing scheduled at night and you'll be working more of a, a normal you know 8 30 4 30 schedule is, is that something that 
works for you? Is it something you have to think about? Um, I'm actually extremely flexible. The only nights that I am busy is Tuesdays and Thursday nights, just because I have um, my classes through Zoom um, for my master's program. But other than that, I'm extremely flexible and I can pretty much work every day, all day. <laughs> okay. Council Murphy is about to ask you that question, so I'm good, but thank you for answering my questions and yeah. thank you for applying. No problem, thank you. Segue over to Councilor Murphy. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Demi, for applying. And uh, so you're working on a master's at, U at AIC, correct? Yes. And you said those classes are Tuesday and Thursday evenings? Yes. And is, is, is it online or? It's online, it's all through Zoom. So in the beginning, I was supposed to have um, those classes hybrid, but because of the pandemic and COVID, they found it best to do Zoom. Um, completely online mm -hmm. okay and and you you have to be in those classes on Tuesday and Thursdays um I don't necessarily have to be there but I do like to be there just because um it's a lot easier to retain a lot of the information um and I just like to be on top of um like my schoolwork and making sure that understand I understand yeah okay I mean that would be a, that's a tough conflict with what we have in in these hours. So, but uh, let me just ask one other question. So, should you get this job, mm -hmm. and a few years down the road you move on to something else, what would you like to have accomplished when you while you were with us? Um, I would just like to have learned, you know, um, basically what goes down like within the job every single day and the policies that are being, you know, talked about and getting kind of like that, a little bit of that like local government background, a little bit in policies and um, getting to see firsthand what goes down around the community. Yeah. Okay, thank you and good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Debbie, you do know uh, the city council meets on uh, the first and third Tuesdays of the month. Yes, I do. Okay, that's I did read that on, Yes, I did read that, and I can always email my professor and let them know. Like, it's totally fine. <laughs> okay, I just want to make you aware of that. Okay, uh, I don't see any of the hands. Um, do you have any questions for us? I do. Um, so what would be, the, like, the most challenging aspect of the job? Having 13 bosses. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's true. I mean, yeah. you have 13 city councilors, and you have 13 different personalities, um, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody is uh, either some are more demanding, some are less demanding. Uh, you just have 13 different personalities. You know, it's, uh, it's probably just trying to get to know 13 people, you know, pretty quickly. Uh, that's what I would say it would be. Um, you know, uh, city council, city government um, is an important, important job. Uh, you know, uh, we have a lot to do, and we have a. Um, it's it's going to be a quick, you know, you have to get off the bat, off the base, you know, right away, and, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be time consuming. It's going to be, um, uh, you know, I think I quite frankly, my honest opinion to me, I think it's very difficult with your, um, with, you know, being, being in college at the same time. It's because uh, we have a lot of meetings, a lot of nighttime meetings. Uh, you know, so it's going to be hard. Yeah, well, I'm always up for a challenge. <laughs> That's the right attitude. All right, so what happens now is next Wednesday is our city council meeting. And at that time, every city council gets to vote for a person that they want in this position. Whoever mm -hmm. wins the majority, that's who gets the position. So having said that, we thank you for taking this time, your time, and uh, joining us tonight. Um, you don't have to stay on now. You can, you can log off of Zoom. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you sure. so much for giving me the opportunity, you know, to do this interview with all of you. Not a problem. Um, Welcome, Debbie. A lot of things at thank once. Thank you. So. It's awesome. Thank Great. You. All right. Thank you. Um, Ryan, as she logs off, we will. Um, hey, Jim. Yeah, I hear you. Go ahead, Ryan. I hear you, Jim. All right. Um, Demi's logging off. And um, do we have Maria? Uh, we don't. So she's not in the waiting room. Um, I did call me for a message. Um, right, Maria thought she was at 740 
anyway. And I never saw anybody going into the, the, the waiting room. No, 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 I've been I've been monitoring the. Uh, yeah, the waiting room I have too. He has not entered it at all. And the only uh, email that we received was from Jessica, I believe. That's correct. Okay, so um, well, she would have been already in there because she thought she was going off at seven forty. It's almost eight thirty now. So, having said that, um, I guess I would entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, go ahead. If I could just ask one quick question, Jim. Right. The uh, the applicants that applied to the uh, personnel, human resource department, did we see all applicants? No. A bunch of them. Hector had sent an email out um, saying that once they found a lot of these people, they saw it on Indeed. Indeed did a good job. A lot of these people were um, down in the Hartford area, I believe. And so as soon as they found out there was a residency requirement, a lot of them just backed out. Okay, but they withdrew it on their own. Yes. Was there right. anyone yeah. that was weeded out that, you know, for whatever reason, by the city or by Hector? Uh, Ryan, you can probably answer that better than I can. But I, I don't think so. Joe, right. Joe, Joe, not that I know of. Um, you know, so the situation was we got some applicants, and there ended up being something like 20 applicants for the position. And um, Hector got back to him to let him know that we were looking at start interviews, but let them know about the um, about the residency requirement. Then Hector received withdrawal letters from a good, like I would say, maybe like 10 applicants um, in that vicinity. And then Hector reached out to all the applicants that we had from then to set up interviews. And that's, you know, we got these, these applications and we have these, um, and these resumes for these six people that were supposed to be here tonight. I know there was only five. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that, that was the process that we went with. Okay. But Hector didn't weed anyone out himself other than the residency issue. Not that I didn't know of you. Yeah, can you just check that for us? Yes, I can. Or I, I'll check it. Don't, don't worry. I, I, I should do that myself, but thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep, thank you. Any else have any questions or any comments? This will make this is the last uh, cohort to interview, or we still have more coming through. No, if that, you're if, right, if guys. Yeah, I mean, this is it. Yeah, you know, just just for the process for us, us as city councilors, uh, this is like no other. I mean, this is like any other appointment where you can uh, you can vote for whoever you'd like the night of the uh, city council meeting. Um, uh, not necessarily these people. I think it's great that these people stepped up and they put their name forward. I always okay. give kind of more credence to that. Um, but nonetheless, and I saw another hand, uh, Libby. Yes, I want to ask. Um, so now, like with other um, committees, um, is there like a recommendation? Do we no. speak up? No. That's a good question. Okay. No, that's a very good okay. question. So, uh, right, like a other committees give recommendation. Right. All we do is we're we're charged with just bringing the people in, giving them the time, giving them the floor, allowing us to go and ask them questions. So this has just been uh, it, it's been complied with really. It just uh, we just did the interview process. So so the up. second part to my question is so the other counselors that were not present tonight asking questions, they watched the Zoom meeting and then when you we go to full council meeting, we yes. do our vote for the person that we select individually? Yes, and it don't okay. have to be the people on the list here. It could be any person that you um you want. You gotta be clear about that. I mean, I do give more credence to these people who put their name out there. Wait a minute, what do you mean not the people on the list here? Not from the people that interviewed? It could you be could, anybody? It could be anybody. You could, uh, oh, you could say Brendan okay. Lay, my son. You'd be a little surprised, but you, do anything you uh, any okay. person you want. All right. Well, thank you for that clarification. Yep. Do you want me? Okay. I entertain the motion to adjourn. If nobody. Oh, we if nobody. the motion that the order has been complied with. So we've thank done you. our part to interview uh, folks for this position. Second that. I'm not part of the committee. Second that. Second. I'm part of the committee. All in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect. All right, guys. Thank you very much for your time again. Good night. I apologize for last week, but uh, we're moving forward. Good night, everybody. Nice job. Thank you, guys. Have a good night.